Hey guys, welcome back to another snapshot video. As I've been speculating in the last snapshot video, it seems like the time for huge additions and changes to the survival mode for 1.16 is over. So this snapshot mostly focuses on smaller tweaks, bug fixes and changes in the background. But there's some interesting ones nevertheless. Let's check out the new smithing table UI. It doesn't look as plain anymore. So the smithing table is used to upgrade your diamond tools, armor, weapons into netherite gear. There's also another change that I quite appreciate. The frequency of ruined portal generation get reduced, so you can't find them quite as often anymore. Let's actually locate one. So there's a ruined portal 500 blocks away at the bottom of the ocean. I think they were a bit too dominant in the landscape, so it feels a bit better to have fewer of them. The Bastion Remnant loot also got changed slightly. So here we got a command block set up to visualize it real quick. So we generate it into this chest. So the most notable change is definitely that you can't get any Nazarite tools, armor, weapons anymore. You get diamond tier now. As you can see here, only a helmet and diamond tier. And in general, you can still get ancient debris, for example, or Nazarite scraps. So you can still get some Nazarite in there, but just not the completed tools or armor anymore. There's also a smaller change to walls again. So now it seems like all blocks that can be placed on the wall will turn it into a pillar. Come sea pickles, pressure plates. I think torches already did that, but now pretty much everything you can place on top of the wall will turn it into a pillar. There was no mention in the patch notes and also can't remember it from last week, but I think the chains got new sound. Yeah, <laughs> as always, Michael really gets those sounds right. It sounds so satisfying. There's also finally an option to change the game rules before starting a new world. So if you click on create new world, there's this game rules tab. And here you can change all the game rules. Previously, you had to do it in game with the commands. For example, you can set the entity cramming threshold higher, etc. It was really convenient. What I would find even better if we could maybe save a profile and change the default values to something else. Because very often I start a new creative world and I will immediately want to turn daylight cycle and weather cycle off. In game, we also have a new video setting. So there's a new slider. You can set the entity distance higher or lower. So values between 50% and 500%. So at the moment at 100%, you can see here, the entities here in the background disappear once I'm a couple chunks away. I was expecting if I set this to 500% now, I could see them from very far away, but it barely changes anything. Also vice versa, if I set it to 50%, it also doesn't change much. So it seems like this feature is still a bit bugged. What I noticed is that mobs in the peripheral of the player's view um, get affected by this entity distance change. So there's yeah two picks or three picks here on the right side. If I have view distance 50, if I move a little bit away, they disappear. If I set it now to 500%, you should see all of them again. So it definitely does a little bit to the to the entity rendering, but it seems like this is still bugged. I would really expect uh, if I set it to 500% that I could see mobs way in the distance. There's also a new command that lets you change entity attributes. So for example, I could set my max health higher. So if I select max health here, I need to go to base, set, and if I set it to 40, we have double the hearts. All right, there's a couple of things you can do with it. I'm not the biggest command block expert and know some basics, but apparently you can change those attributes of entities. The eye height of TNT also has been adjusted again. So at the moment I'm in last week's snapshot where the eye height was a bit lower. One of the direct consequences was that TNT would propel other TNT up. As you can see here, we got two TNT in the same spot. The first TNT shoots the second TNT up. Now let's switch over to the current snapshot. So let's test this again. So now we're kind of back to the normal behavior. We had before, so the TNT doesn't get shot up anymore. It would get actually sh get shot down. And we have another bug fix. So there was a problem that entities didn't receive any fire damage while they were standing in flames during rain time. So we can still hear the sizzling sounds. Previously they were extinguished before they would take damage, but that doesn't happen anymore and they get properly burned. 
That's it for this snapshot. Thanks guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.